Dooley, welcome back, mate. Another IPL in India. How many is this now? Uh, gosh, how many years have we had it? 16, so it'll be 16. You've done every single year? Yes, mate, I have. I have indeed. So what has changed, before we even get into the games, what has changed over the last 16 years? If, 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 if you were asked, just off the bat, you said three things that you've noticed over 16 years. Um, I'll start with India. Um, it, it come an enormous way. I mean, it was it was okay um, 16 years ago. It was a decent place to travel, but um, five star hotels are plenty. Airports are unbelievable, um, and I think there's such a massive growing middle class in India that uh, the country is is changing enormously and and will continue to change. So traffic hasn't got any better, Marty, but um, <laughs> those things uh, those things have certainly changed for the better. From a cricket point of view, the game's just evolved. It, it's evolving massively. Um, the impact player has had a huge difference on this tournament in particular. Um, we are no longer seeing the sort of the all rounders dominate. We're seeing batters and and genuine bowlers so um, i think the cricket's got better to watch um sides have worked out how to play t20 cricket in the last couple of years and taking more risks so yeah i i think it's um it's sort of only moving forward as long as the tournament doesn't get much longer i think it'll it'll still have a huge amount of success which it's having you would have noticed the way the cricket is played is just dramatically different isn't it in 16 years now yeah, massively. Um, you know, you go back to those early days, and, and the sides hadn't played a lot of international T20 cricket. Players weren't really used to it. They didn't know what a good score was. Uh, you found it hard to control um, run rates if they got out of out of out of the sort of uh, out of the ordinary, and and players just didn't have the innovation. And I think that's the biggest thing that you know the batters, the innovation in batting is um, phenomenal nowadays, and the. I guess the brashness of the young talent, particularly the young Indian talent, is phenomenal. So what IPL has done for them, for India, uh, although they haven't won T20 World Cup or an ODI World Cup, they are producing a really high level of player um, at a very, very young age who are, who are so skilled. And it, it's also brought about, uh, you know, I think every kid or every young boy in India 15, 20, 30 years ago, still wanted to play for India. But now it's not so much just about India. It's about getting to an IPL franchise because if we can do that, it's absolutely life-changing. This impact player rule, if people don't know what it is, is it allows the franchises to name five subs, uh, one who, who can come on as a sub and repa replace a player. Uh, that person's got to be named, though, before the game starts. And they did this, what, to say that the, the toss wouldn't overly influence in terms of how the pitch played? Yeah, a little bit of that, um, and a little bit to get the best players involved. Uh, and, and you know, I don't mind it. I, I, you know, like tonight's instance for, for Chennai Super Kings, um, they batted first, put a couple of hundred on the board, and then they bring um, Patirana, the young um, Sri Lankan, and to bowl. He bowls beautifully and, and makes a big difference in the game. And um, one of the batters just sits out and doesn't field. So it's an easy gig for one of the top order batters who doesn't field. But I think you're either getting an extra high quality batter coming in or you're getting an extra high quality bowler. So the standard of, of the players on the field doing their particular role is uh, is better. And you ended up with higher scores because teams are now able to play six, seven, and even at times eight genuine batters, one or two of which you can bowl a bit. And uh, so the scores are actually better. Does it diminish, though, the role of the genuine all-rounder? Does it mean that we're not going to see that player as much? Absolutely. Uh, so those guys are now having to upskill and make sure that they uh, either improve their batting or improve their bowling. So that, you know, there, there's still enough genuine all-rounders going in, on in the league, the likes of Jadeja, Akshar Patel, um, you know, Andre Russell still floating around. Daryl Mitchell bowled a couple of overs tonight very tidily um, after scoring a few runs, a 24 off 20. So... You know, there's still a role there, but it has diminished that sort of bits and pieces guy, the guy that you can bat a little bit and maybe bowl you two overs. Uh, that role is kind of diminished. So you've, you've still got to have one genuine skill. And in Mitchell's case, it's his batting, but he does get to bowl. Jadeja's case, it's his bowling, but he does get to bat. So, you know, it, it, it's diminished it a bit, but I think we're seeing a higher quality of player on the field. Simon Doyle is with us. We're talking about the IPL. Why hasn't this been picked up by uh, other international 
franchise tournaments and also the ICC itself? Yeah, ICC is an interesting one. Whether they look at it or not, I don't know. The other thing they've changed here is the the two bouncer rule. So bowlers, fast bowlers are allowed to bowl, or any bowler, I suppose, is allowed to bowl two bouncers, which um, will change when we get to the T20 World Cup. So that won't be there. So these guys are getting used to slightly different laws, which won't be there at the T20 World Cup, which will be interesting to see how they cope uh, when it comes to that period of time. But um, you know, there's one one law I think the ICC have done brilliantly, which is the time. So the batter has to be ready to face the ball within 60 seconds, within a minute. Uh, I think that's a, a brilliant one, which the IPL probably should have brought in because games are still going a little bit too long uh, for our liking. You know, over four hours tonight, which is too long for a T20 game. But yeah, I don't know whether the ICC will look at this impact player rule. The, the one thing I, I, I genuinely dislike about the ICC world events is the number of players you're allowed when i when i look at football marty and you know love of both of ours a football world cup you're allowed what 23 in a squad you're allowed seven or eight on the bench when a player gets injured in a cricket world cup he's kind of gone and then you have to have someone else get injured for him to come back that that rule needs to change because you when you have a world cup you want the best players on the field at all stages and if Kane Williamson misses two games, New Zealand have to carry a player just to cover for him, but they're not allowed to actually let him go, um, get rehabilitated and just come straight back in. So that needs to change from an ICC point of view. Because I think when you have a World Cup, it is your spectacle and you want the best players on the park whenever they can play. If they've been out for two weeks, they come straight back in and they're allowed without going through all the kerfuffle of of getting um, you know, re-registered and re-entered into the tournament and, and having to get permission to play them and all this all this garbage that goes on. In terms of the the impact player though, does does it does it absolutely enhance the product or not? It does. Yeah, I think it does. I think teams have worked it out. Some sides are starting Rajasthan started the other night with just three overseas players. So if you start with three, you're allowed to bring an overseas impact player in. If you have four overseas players on the park, you can't replace an overseas player with another. So you're never allowed to have five different overseas players taking part in the match. You are only allowed four. So to have an impact player from as an overseas, you have to start with three and then bring one in. From an Indian player point of view, um, you know, it just must replace an Indian player. And, um, and that's the the sort of situation we've come to. But I, I think it does enhance the game. I think it's um, made for a higher quality of batter or bowler coming into the side. Just if we look quickly at the New Zealand side, so going into the T20 World Cup, and I'm just trying to put a perspective on it for people, so that if, if this rule was in place, who would be our impact player and how would it operate? Uh, gosh, it, it, I mean, if you think about, you see, so you pick your batting side and your bowling, so you take, take two team sheets out to the toss. If you win the toss and you always know what your batting side is, it you list your eight, nine batters. New Zealand's impact player would probably be Lockie Ferguson uh, in that instance. He would come into the side for um, a top-order player who doesn't field, who I'm trying to think of at the moment. It wouldn't be Ravindra, but it'd be someone else in that top order um, who doesn't have to field, and Lockie Ferguson would come in and bowl, or Adam Milne would come in and bowl. Um, that would be the sort of situation. If you field first, obviously, you know, you, you pick your bowling lineup, so you've got six genuine bowlers, and then Lockie Ferguson would drop out and someone would come into bat, a, a top order batter.